Hey guys, this is Henry from Obedi again. Today we're going to keep working on the preferences window of Pro Tools. And on today's video, I'm going to be explaining you how to deal with the metering tab of the preferences window and the processing tab. Start with the metering. This is one of the, I guess, uh, when you're dealing with mixing, metering is crucial, especially when you're trying to achieve proper gain staging. You got four sections here track and master meter types, advanced meter type settings, clip and peaks, and display. So let's start here, track and master meter types. So basically here you can select the type of meter for track meters and the type of um, metering you're gonna have on your master. They can be different. And Pro Tools recommends you to I guess you could say they recommend you because by default they're set to different types, okay? Um, I like my tracks to be set to sample peak, okay? Uh, people that come from older versions of Pro Tools might like this to be Pro Tools Classic. I typically just do sample peak. Um, and then master meter, I like it to be linear. Uh, some people like digital VUs, some people do VUs, depending on what you're uh, used to work on. Um, some people, once again, coming from older versions of Pro Tools, they'll just do Pro Tools Classic, and it'll look like a Pro Tools Classic uh, Master Meter or Master Track. Uh, people working in you know, broadcasting and maybe some for pictures, they might want to work with the uh, K metering or the, the PPM metering. That's totally up to you. Um, if you uh, click here, track and master meter types length, then they're both going to be the same. If this is off, you can have different ones. I like this to be off, and as I said, I like my tracks to be sample peak and my master meter to be linear. And you can see that if I open my window here, my mix window, you can see like, for example, here, this synth 2 track, this is sample peak. So basically 0 dB full scale, it's right there at the top, and then above that, there's my clip indicator. And you can see it goes all the way from minus infinity all the way to zero. Um, and then it has, you know, um, there's little marks here at minus 5, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20, 25, 30, so on and so forth. Basically 5 by 5, every f 5 dBFS you have a mark. And then linear for the master, it's a linear um, linear meter. That'll show peaks, and it'll also show at the same time, it'll be simultaneous, it'll show you um, where the RMS is located. Let's go back to preferences. So that's as far as your meter types. Now, you can also um, tweak the way your meter, in this case your sample peak, works okay you can tweak things like the way the decay works um, you can switch where the color breaks are located um, when the meter is working and let me go ahead and open it again so here's a meter let's say let's see for example this sub meter there's a meter here but the meter has a break you can see here it's green and then here it turns to another color so that's a meter break or a color break so basically, you can set uh, a color break for quote-unquote low levels. So everything below minus 20 dBFS is going to have a color. And then everything above minus 6 is going to be uh, considered a high level. So you basically have three colors. You have a high level, you have a low, and whatever is in between has another color. That's uh, That help you, I guess you could say it's a visual cue. Well, it actually is a visual cue for you to know more or less where your levels are located. Now, you can reset all of this by simply clicking on the reset button. You also have your clip and peak um, configurations. Uh, let's start with the peak. So, you can hold the peak by some recent... Um, you want to change this? Well, by default, it's three seconds, so the peaks are going to stay showing by three seconds, but you could do infinite or none, so the peaks are never uh, held. Now, clips. Uh, you can 
hold that clip indication for three seconds. You can just do none. I don't recommend you to say none because you're not going to be able to see if it clips. And then you can do infinite. Uh, by default, I'm pretty sure Pro Tools will do infinite. So if you clip, the clip light will turn on. And if you want it to stop, you have to go and literally go into that clip and then click on that clip light to turn it off. Uh, the good thing about having it infinite is that it'll tell you, hey, something clipped. And then it'll, you know, if you see it, you'll go back and try to see where it happened. And you'll um, modify either the compressor or maybe the, just the overall level to compensate for that clip. Then you have uh, display. So you got some display configurations here, for example, uh, show send assignment level meter. So when you have a send, if that's on, like here, you can see I have a snare rebirth send. There's a little vertical bar here. That's actually the level meter for that send. So you can see that there. Um, you also have the show insert assignment gain reduction meter. So if you have an insert that does gain reduction, like for example here, my overhead track, I have the C1 compressor, that little vertical bar there, that's actually a gain reduction meter. I know it's small, but it's a little bit of a visual cue uh, that'll let you know if it's actually applying any gain reduction or not. And that basically saves you time from opening it and actually seeing if there's any gain reduction happening. And then you have another one, which is the show track gain reduction meter. And that's basically this gain reduction here. For example, here's my overhead track. Uh, it's a stereo track, so you got two level meters there. And then you have one right next to those. This one here that looks kind of smaller, that's actually a gain reduction meter. So if there's any gain reduction happening within the inserts, you're going to be able to see that here. And the mode for that gain reduction meter, you can switch here the type. In this case, I have set to compressor limiter only. So if there's any compression uh, or limiting happening, it'll show up there. But you could also do expander gate. If you're doing a lot of expansion gate, you could do priority uh, compressor limiter or priority as expander gate, or you could do all summed. Um, I personally just leave it as compressor limiter because I do that um, a lot. So, so that's basically your metering tab. We're going to go ahead and do the processing tab too. Um, a lot of the stuff that I that you're gonna see here, I just leave default. I don't, I don't feel um, you should be messing with this. I think the Pro Tools has this pretty well uh, set by default. So you got, for example, uh, Audio Suite, TCE, Import, Elastic Audio, DSP, Commit, and Miscellaneous. So uh, as far as the Audio Suite. I typically just leave the length to two seconds, which is the default handle length. Then you got TCE, time compression and expansion. Uh, here's where you set up the TCE default plugin. I just leave that default to Avid time shift. Um, then you have, for example, here, import. All these options basically modify what happens to data that you import into Pro Tools. For example, um, if you... Uh, select, for example, this one, automatically copy files on import, then when you import a file into the session, it'll copy them to the session automatically. I typically leave that off. I should probably leave them on just because it'll make things easier and faster, but when you start importing things and you start copying, then your session size starts to grow, your audio files folder specifically. So I leave that off, and when I import, I typically just if I want to copy them into a session, I'll copy them. If not, I just won't. Uh, things like, for example, import rex files as clip groups. I have that off. Uh, do not convert sample rate on import. That's off. Um, I like it to convert the sample rate on import so it matches the session. A um, couple things here. Drag and drop from desktop conforms to session tempo. I do have that on on Rex and Asset files because these are uh, files that are typically uh, linked to a tempo. So yes, when I import a Rex file, I want it to automatically conform to session tempo so it plays back at the same tempo. It, I don't see why you would want it to be another way. Uh, you got also Elastic Audio. Uh, if you're like me that you use Elastic Audio to edit, you know, like vocals or pianos, by default, 
Um, you can set a Elastic Audio mode or Elastic Audio plugin. By default, it's set to polyphonic. Um, I typically leave it in monophonic because I do a lot of Elastic Audio in vocals, mostly on vocals, and vocals are monophonic content, so I just leave that as monophonic. So as soon as I open Elastic Audio, boom, the monophonic mode uh, or the monophonic Elastic Audio plugin opens. Uh, you got some DSP management, enable heat in all sessions. I have that off. I don't really use um, heat. Then you got some committing features here. Uh, render file bit def. Always use 32 bit. That is the file bit def that's going to happen when you render, when you commit something. So, yes, um, you could do 32 bits or you can just follow the session settings and it'll just do whatever the session setting is. It's really up to you. And then miscellaneous parallel attack optimizations, I just leave that off, okay? Which is, I'm pretty sure, the default. So that's the metering and the processing tab from the preferences window in Pro Tools. I hope this tutorial was helpful and follow us for the next one in which we're going to be working on the other tabs. I hope uh, we'll see you guys soon and take care. Bye-bye. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.